Hi guys, this is Shelly with So Shelly Quilts. So, I did a video yesterday, and I did it in the wrong format, so you couldn't see it. And it was all about needle felting, so I'm going to redo that, because I really want you to see how cool and easy this is. Just a, a fun little project. This is not meant to be anything beautiful. I was just wanting to spend some time at my machine yesterday and wanted to do some needle felting. I did do some quilting on the background first and then put the, the felting on top and um, added some yarns. And so we're going to play with the number 45 needle felting foot. Let me set my camera up. I know sometimes um, we try to learn new things and it's not worth our time to have done it. So I was playing with new camera techniques yesterday, got the video uploaded and realized it was so that you couldn't see everything I was doing. I hope this one works out better. This is the number 45 Bernina needle felting foot. So it's a clear plastic case. This is a, a wide hole in the bottom uh, that the uh, needles go through. In front of that is a slot at the front of the foot here. If I can get that to focus. That you could put a ribbon and feed it in there and down through the bottom and the felting tools would then make the ribbon follow a path. And on the back is a hole Let's see if we can see it. It's the same idea. You could put a yarn in and have it go in there and out the bottom. And then that felting tool would f have that ribbon or that yarn follow that path. So this is the number 45 felting foot. It uses punch needles. And they come three to a... Um, you put them three at a time on this particular number 45 foot and needle set. When you get this set, you need to um, make sure to order the stitch plate that fits on your machine that has the three holes for the needles. You are going to break a needle. I just did. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to change it. There is a little tiny Allen wrench that comes in with your punch needle set. Don't lose it. I keep mine on blue tape inside the box. Then you come to the back side and just use that Allen wrench to release the needle. It will come out. Then you can get the new punch needle, Oops. insert it. They're round. There isn't a flat side, so it doesn't matter what direction you insert it. And then use the Allen wrench and tighten it. And ta-da, you're back in business. You are going to break needles. That's just a part of it. They're um, barbed. They don't have a eye on them. They're just a three barbed needles. Now the whole needle unit, the individual needles are round. It doesn't matter. But the whole unit is flat back. Just like a sewing needle. So you will put that in a certain direction with the back. Flat back to the back of the um, unit. So let's get that put in with our screwdriver. I huh? don't know why I can't find the hole. There we go. All right. So now these three needles will go into this needle plate. Now I've set the security on this machine so that it knows I'm using this style of needle and this style of plate and told it in, in fact that this is um, the foot that I have on. I'm using a Bernina 830 
and um, this works on any nine millimeter wide Bernina machine. This is the new Bernina punch tool. I don't know, it came out within the last 10 years. I could look it up. For the longest time, the only punch tool they had was the 5.5 millimeter, and now they have this one. So, since yesterday's sample is completed, I just set up another sample for you today that we can punch on a little bit. And so, because I wanted you to see that. So I just grabbed some scraps. And one of the things I wanted you to see, well, it's just how it works. So I'm going to say needle down, and here we go. All it's going to do is be punching and combining those fibers with those barbed needles. Kind of stirring them up together like a mixer. If you do it really lightweight, then you can even remove what you've punched. You can pull it back out again. If you do it heavy, it really becomes permanent and um, just a part of the base that you're punching on. Usually, um, natural fibers punch better than um, poly, but this happens to be just um, cheap craft felt and, frankly, an inexpensive piece of yarn. One of the things I was showing you in the film that went wrong was the presser foot pressure adjustment. You see, I'm not going really fast. I want to make sure and go slower. But when you come to somewhere that's got multiple, multiple layers, let me get another layer on here so that it gets thicker. And let's say I just wanted more and more layers here, and it might or might not jump up over this high spot. Anytime you need to change your presser foot pressure, you can do so either mechanically or electronically. It happens to be electronic on this. But watch the bottom of this foot. It's not only going to go to um, higher when I go down, but it's actually going to go on my screen into negative numbers. Look how high I can set that. So my presser foot is actually down, but it's raised high enough to go over something very, very tall. I don't need it that high, but I just wanted you to see when you're um, doing this type of work, you might raise and lower that presser foot a lot. So there it was in a higher mode, less, um, um, a lower number would mean less pressure, so the foot would set higher. And now I'll move back to a higher number, meaning more pressure, and so the foot sets down then closer to the surface of that thinner layer. So that is one of the resources that you can use when you're doing needle felting. So there we've kind of gone over um, changing your needle, the end results, see here it's getting tight again, I can feel it, so I'm just going to lower the presser foot pressure number, which is less pressure, which raises the foot to a higher. Now that works whether you're sewing or needle felting or doing anything. So the presser foot pressure adjustment is just really obvious right here. You always want it to where the bottom of that foot is holding the fabric secure to where it's not jumping up and down and flagging, but it's also got plenty of space to freely move underneath. So when I come out here to that thinner part, I might want to um, increase the um, pressure, make the number bigger which lowers the foot, puts more pressure on it. So needle felting, lots of fun, lots of reasons you might want to do that. You could also be incorporating um, uh, wool roving. 
which is beautiful and fun. And then the other thing, um, needle felting, this tool works with our version eight software. So you could either alter a design that has already been created or create a new design and tell it that you wanted it to be needle felted and the version eight software will send that information to the machine when the embroidery design goes and it will fill in a needle felting path. So the last thing I want to show you about needle felting. So I'm just going over some yarn here. Silk ribbon works beautifully. I could have grabbed some of that. See, I'm just following this path wherever that yarn happened to be. Don't get your fingers. So that's that. Let's um, um, look at the back. So the cool thing about needle felting is sometimes the back is just as neat or neater than the front. It could be that I just wanted to continue punch, punch, punching, and that would become the correct side. Um, it could be that I laid it out and this was the wrong side. So that's up to you uh, what your intentions are. These could be just colors being pushed through so that I got color on the back and layered it from that direction. So let me show you my finished project. So this was just a fun little oh, wall hanging. I could make it into the front of a bag. I could make it into a pillow. With this, I was careful when I used my fringed edges not to felt those down. I added some yarn for color right here in the stripes. I just used layers. It was a lot of fun. Actually, I used my AccuQuilt Go Cutter and just cut out a bunch of shapes. But here is the back. So it could be that this is the side that somebody was more interested in as being a subtle background for something else or the whole picture. So sometimes the back of needle felting is really the right side that you were actually pushing color. Anyway, this is Shelly with So Shelly Quilts. And I just wanted you to see the needle felting tool today. Have a nice day.